What's good? This is Josh Levi, and I just skipped class with the progress report. The progress report. Cool. All right, what's good, y'all? It's your fave McFly, and welcome to Skipping Class. Today we have the viral sensation Josh Levi. How are you today? What's good? I'm feeling good. I'm in Atlanta. I just ate a bunch of food, and uh, I can't complain. All right, all right. Well, we're glad you're full. We fed you good. <laughs> and thank you for sitting down with us today. And I want to start off by congratulating you on signing with Atlantic Records. Thank you. That's a major. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a blessing. I've been with Atlantic and Radio Issa Rae's label for maybe two years now, I think. Um, so yeah, it's a blessing. I've been doing music for a long time. Um, and I've always kind of wanted to be in partnership with a great company that has history in the music business. Um, so it's been cool, it's, it's been dope. It's, it's been interesting, every day is different, but I'm grateful to be here. It's only my third day out here, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so tell me about signing day. Signing day, um, signing day was at this restaurant in Brentwood in LA um, when I had these lamb chops and these mashed potatoes with Issa and my mom and my creative director and uh, my manager. And it was a vibe. It was really cool. It felt just like a new beginning, a new era. And um, yeah, that was, that was a cool time. I just got to connect with Issa, explain to her my vision, which is something I love doing. I love just like telling people, the powers that be, whoever I'm working with, whoever I'm partnering with, like, yo, this is what I see in my head. This is where I, what I want to say. This is what I want to do. Um, and that's what we did. We chopped it up. Um, and I, I cracked some jokes, made her laugh, which made me feel good because she makes me laugh. And it was a fun day. That's dope. Just connecting with Issa Rae, she's such a dope person. And tell me, how did you even connect with her? How did she hear about you? So I put out a song. On, I put out an EP called Disc One independently um, in 2020 during COVID, which is a crazy story because right before COVID started, I just was fortunate and lucky enough to have a bunch of songs that went together that sounded like a world. And I met my manager like right at that time, right before COVID. And he was like, yo, bro, let's just put out, you have like a, a project, you have a body of work, let's put out an EP. And I, at the time, I didn't have any EPs out. I never put out a project. And I was like, you want to put out an EP during COVID and I can't promote it and everybody is depressed? And he was like, why not, man? Like, music is a soundtrack to people's lives. Like, you have music, just just put it out there. I was like, all right, all right, bet. So I put that out independently with no, no, just with my own money. And... Um, and Issa, the president of her label, called my manager singing my song, Don't They, from that EP, Disc One. And that's kind of how everything started. That's dope, that's dope, because at first you were thinking, I don't know if this is gonna work out, and it did. It did, it did. I always, I have pretty good faith, and I, I, I believe in myself, and I believe in God to do crazy things but at that time I was I think I definitely was scared it was like a fear thing of like um, I hadn't gotten used to releasing music and putting out a body of work so it was new for me but it was great because people music is a part of people's lives music is like I said the soundtrack to people's lives and at that time there was nothing for anybody to do but to stay at home and just jam put their playlist on so yeah <clears throat> that's true that's true and music is the soundtrack of people's lives and music is the root of a, of a lot of things that's going on in the world and you you grew up in houston is that correct h-town yes okay. yes grew up in houston and now you're living in la yep and i live in la now so how's the transition coming from the south moving to the west coast like how is that now LA and Houston are two different worlds. Uh, so it was something to get used to. Houston is very flat. It's like, it's just hot as hell. 
and it has a real culture. Houston has a culture to it. Um, and the food is amazing. LA, it was like a, it was a fresh, whole new situation. Um, a lot of palm trees and great weather. The people were different than people in Houston and the girls were different. Um, so it was just, it was just a little bit of a culture shock, but I was pretty young and I knew that there was a lot of opportunity in LA. So I was just like, let's figure out what's going on over here. Cause it feels like there's some opportunities here and some people here that could change my life and help me be the rock star I wanted to be like as a, as a kid. So. So as a child, you wanted to be a rock star, but you grew up in a pretty Christian home. How was that transition from, you know, more of a faith-based music gospel to more secular music? How was that received? Um, so I grew up listening to gospel music pretty much only, only gospel music. My parents only ever played BET gospel. There was nothing else. They, and it wasn't that like they just didn't want to listen to anything else. They just didn't have really a taste or interest in pop culture. So I always like grew up making jokes like, damn, y'all never watched the VMAs. Y'all never had the MTV Awards. Y'all never had anything on TV. Like everybody else was watching 106 in Park and TRL. And my family was never really watching that. But my dad loved amazing voices. So whether it was gospel or whatever, he always was calling me from um, his room and my room was upstairs saying, Joshua, come watch this uh, Jasmine Sullivan performance. Come watch this um, Whitney Houston song. And I was exposed to like amazing singers really early on. And then I started dancing competitively as a kid. And that's kind of what exposed me to like hip hop and everything else and I just was mesmerized. I was like, damn, like this this music has a whole different energy to it and like the percussion and the soundscapes and like the production of everything. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what like opened me up to everything else in music. And then, um, and my mom just, she was just like, okay, yeah, you have a vision. If that's what you want to do. As long as you still have an amazing heart and like follow God each step of the way, let's get it. Okay, that's dope, that's dope. Having your family support is very important. So I did a little research and I heard your first song that you heard, your first hip hop song was Nicki Minaj and Trey Song's Bottoms Up. Yes, how'd you know that? Because I did my research. <laughs> yes, so the first hip hop class I ever took in LA, um, damn, I wish I, I gotta figure out I gotta figure out who the choreographer was so I could tell the story every time. But it was actually like an advanced class. Uh, advanced classes at that time, kids weren't allowed in the advanced class just because I guess they didn't want them to slow the people down. Um, but I was pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. So they let me in and the song was, um, it was Bottoms Up, Trey Songs and Nikki. And that was my first time hearing like kind of just like a pop, hip hop, like R&B song. Um, and I just was like, this beat is crazy. I can see it and I can hear it like right now all over again for the first time. And I remember hearing that snare in that song and the 808 and I was like, oh yeah, something about this is just hits. It's me in my face. So ever since then, I haven't turned back. But that was my, that was like one of my first, no, actually I heard, um, I heard my first Nicki song I heard was Your Love. Um, but, but I think that was like my second like Nicki song I heard. Okay, so going back a little bit to your girl, your upbringing in Houston, one of your childhood friends is Normani. You guys grew up together. Yes. And she also did your hair or unbraided your hair in your music video. Yes. So how does that feel coming full circle? You guys grew up together and you guys are both doing your thing in entertainment now. Um, it's really cool that um, she is in that music video because that song is 
the song that um, Radio and Issa first or called my manager singing. So um, I she that was her favorite song from my EP, and I just was like joking. I can't remember who did it first. I think she was joking, and she was like, "I want to be on the song." No, no, no. I asked her to be in the video. I had an idea for her to be in the video, and she was like, "Okay, yeah, I'm down." And then when we got done, finished filming the video, she was like, um, "Well, send me the stems for this song." And I was like, "You play so much. All you do is play. Like, just playing with my time." She was like, "No, I'm serious. Send me the um, stems." And then she jumped on the song, the remix on disc two, and um, it was definitely like a full circle moment, which was really dope. That's dope. That's dope. Okay, so you're a singer, songwriter, actor, and then you also design as well. Is that correct? Yeah. So, which would you say is the toughest job? The toughest job. Hmm. That's a good question. I would say the toughest job is doing everything at the same time. <laughs> um, being an artist is like always wearing multiple hats, and and sometimes I can't do one thing at a time. And I'm an artist, but I'm also editing, and I'm also designing, and I'm also songwriting, and then I'm also getting auditions for films that I am inspired by, and reading scripts for stuff that like speaks to me. So I think I think the hardest part is kind of doing everything that I want to do at the same time, and being one person and not being seven different Joshes. But I manage to do it somehow every now and then, and then other times it's just like. I just blow up but but yeah no I would say that's like the hardest part okay so as a singer what do you what is your take on the current state of R&B right now I love that question um I'm really excited and inspired to be a part of this generation of R&B um R&B is like it's like the underrated genre that people don't always give the credit to but it's such a foundation to so much music and so many genres of music so it feels like right now there's a time where there's a real platform and love and respect for R&B and I'm happy to be in today's generation um, just adding my point of view to the genre um, bringing energy to R&B and the women are really doing their thing, which is really beautiful to watch all my friends and all my peers. And, uh, and then for me, I just wanna like do what I can on the, on the male side of R&B and, and just make it, make it dope, make it great. And you're doing your part, so we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Okay, so tell me, what are your thoughts on Usher's Super Bowl performance? Usher's Super Bowl, the Usher Bowl, you mean? <coughs> the Usher Bowl. Um, <laughs> Oh man, that was just, it's just cool. It's just, it's really dope to live in the time to watch Usher get a stage like that. I think it was overdue. He has got bangers. He's put in so much into culture, into music, into R&B. And just to see, you know, another male, another black artist, a black man, be elevated like that is always just the best thing on the eyes. It's just like, a, it's like refreshing, it feels good. And, and I just, I'm so inspired by Usher. I grew up singing all of his songs, so I felt really connected to him. And as a new guy coming up, it just was cool to, to see that and be inspired by it and, and to see myself in a position like that. Like all you can ever ask for as an artist coming into the game is to see see yourself in the people that are at those high levels and at these on these stages and on these platforms. And um, I can't remember the last time I saw myself before Usher, maybe Michael and I was like super young. So it was really dope. Yeah, it was a dope it was a dope um, performance for sure. So let's talk about your song. 
Okay. Your song Birthday Dance has taken over social media. It's going crazy. It has gone viral like no other. Every time I go on TikTok, someone's doing a dance. Really? Yes. Have you learned the dance yet? I haven't learned the dance. I haven't heard the song. I'm just like birthday dance. I heard somebody mentioned it earlier, but I'm like, what is this birthday dance hype about? Um, so I'm yeah, I gotta figure it out. But but no, I I I'm really grateful that everybody is doing their little dance all over the internet and just all over the world. Uh, one of my favorite videos is these kids in Africa dancing to birthday dance and. These are all things that I dreamed and prayed about and, and asked God for. So just to see people getting up and being happy and moving to a song that I believed in is not the worst feeling. It's a good feeling. Um, and I'm excited going into my debut album just to like keep this energy and, to, and all these new people, all these new fans and love and support um, that I'm getting means a lot and it's motivating and energizing me going into my, my, my debut album. But I'm excited and it, and it feels good. I'm just happy that people are having a reason or an excuse to dance, to move around, to celebrate themselves, whether or not it's their birthday or it's not their birthday. Okay, so did you expect it to go as crazy as it's been going? I, I did not expect for a birthday dance to, I don't know, actually, no, that's a lie. When I made birthday dance and I shared it with just my team and my friends, I told everyone that I feel like this song will make a lot of people smile and I feel like it'll surprise us. And some people on my team was like, eh, eh, yeah, I'm calling y'all out, yeah. And um, I was like, no, y'all. Bro, this song, it feels it feels good. I think it'll make people feel great. So I believed in it from day one. Did I expect it to go viral the way it went viral? Absolutely not. But we're here, we out here, and I'm just happy that it's growing every single day and it's just giving me an opportunity to be seen and connect with way more people. <clears throat> well, you've connected with a lot of people. 69 million views over 120,000 creations. That's a lot of people. It is a lot of people. Have you shot a video for the song yet? Yes, I did shoot a music video, an official music video for Birthday Dance. I don't know when this interview is coming out, but I'm sh I mean, my video will probably be out soon. So, but I did shoot an official music video. I've been hinting at it here and now, here and there on social media, I think on TikTok and Twitter. But it's a vibe, I'm really excited. Um, I shot it right before in between traveling and doing a bunch of stuff but it's got some choreo it's got some cool moments and i think it represents the song really well i'm, I'm hyped okay okay well you have been well you've become increasingly popular on social media you have let's see you have let me see 130 i'm sorry 183,000 followers on ig like yes. you're moving at a crazy rate. You have over 522,000 followers on TikTok. It's going crazy for you right now. So when someone tells <laughs> you, Josh, Levi, talk your junk, like you are doing your thing. What is it that you say to that? Like when I say, Josh, talk your stuff, what would you say? I say, God is good. <laughs> all the time. That's all I can say. Like, you know, I'm not in control of this this crazy life, I just put in the work. Of course I want to grow, and of course I want to reach more people. Of course I want my music to touch and connect with people all around the world, but there's only so much I can do. So I'm grateful that for some reason right now is, is the time for my time, for people to, to connect with the things that I'm creating and the ideas that's in my head. And I usually just say exactly that, like God is good, I mean, I'm grateful, and and as it should. <laughs> That's true. God is good, and he's he's doing wonderful things in your life. So. I'm into and, that. And the energy that you bring has been impactful to a lot of different people, a lot of different genres. So, do you feel, as a younger artist, do you feel responsibility to the O's looking up to you to present a positive message? Uh. I'm naturally a positive person. 
So it's less of like feeling like a responsibility and more so feeling like that's just my job as a person to be authentic to myself is to be an extension of for the things that I do to be an extension of me, which is positivity, peace, and good vibes. So, um, yes, I do feel that as a responsibility, but not because someone is telling me to do that, but it's because it's genuinely who I am and what I believe in and what I stand for. So that's always my hope, is that when someone press play on a Josh Levi song or they attend a Josh Levi show, that they feel something, if they feel something different, that they they leave changed or refreshed or um, renewed or um, just feel good, feel better about themselves, feel more confident, feel like they can fly. Because um, that's how I feel when I see my favorite artists. So I would love to have that same and give that same feeling to my fans or the younger people that are watching what I'm doing. Okay, okay. Now, this is for me, okay? okay? It's on camera, but it's for me. Okay. You redid Jasmine Sullivan's Lions, Tigers, and Bears. I just want like like five seconds. Okay? <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just want like five seconds. Okay. You got me? <laughs> I got you. Okay, go. That's crazy because that's a hard song and you, you just put me on the spot like I, that. I know. But it's a good one. Um, huh? I'm not scared of lions and tigers and bears But I'm scared of loving you I'm not scared to perform at a sold out affair But I'm scared of loving you If I don't know those things, it's an impossible task Why it don't last, is it too much to ask? Why do we love love? When love seems to hate us. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Did you hear you? <laughs> Did, okay. I hear you? Did you hear you? Did you hear you? I heard you. Your mic is on. That's funny. It the is. mic is on. It, your mic is on. <laughs> and you also did Let It Snow as well, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. I told you I did my research. You did do your research. I did. I told well, you, you want five seconds of that too? You only get one. Okay, I take that one. I'll <laughs> no, take okay. that one. I take the one. Like, I love Jasmine. I am, a, I am a Jasmine fan. Oh, she's my favorite. So I also, and that was one of the questions I was going to ask you, but I saw that Justin Bieber, as well as Chris Brown, they also co-signed your songs. Those are major, those are like iconic people. How does it feel to have major icons co-signing you? Um, it is a great feeling, I'm not going to lie. It feels really good. Bieber is one of my close friends, and at the time that he showed me love, I never met him or talked to him, so... It just was a good feeling. What can I say? I mean, I look up to I look up to him so much, and he's one of the biggest artists of our time. Um, same with Chris. I hadn't met him. Still haven't met him yet. Um, but it just was not on my bingo card. I wasn't expecting it. And anytime like things like that happen, it just as an artist that's like new and coming into the game. Um, it feels like confirmation that somebody, somebody is connecting with what you're doing. Of course, I have my fans that love what I'm doing, but once you reach those people that like you look up to, it's like, oh wow, this is weird because I actually love this person. I love their music and they like something I did. Interesting. And then you're just like, well, okay, amazing. We get that. <laughs> yeah, it's like a full circle moment. Like, I, like it's, it's showing you that your hard work is paying off. Yeah, it's definitely reassuring. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best word. That's the best word. I love Justin to death. And Chris, I've sung his songs so many times for talent shows and showcases and auditions and <coughs> you name it um, in Houston um, growing up and stuff. So it was really dope. Okay. Unexpected. So, of course, we, are, we all know that you're a Libra, so congratulations on that. Thank you. Congratulations to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So tell me, what is your your most identifiable Libra trait? Um, first, I want to say I'm lucky to be a Libra. I'm thankful to be a Libra, and I'm grateful to be a Libra. Um, 
God outdid himself. Um, my favorite thing about this life that I have is, um, as a Libra, is the balance part of it all. It's my favorite thing. Even the Libra like sign, the symbol is the scales. We're balanced people and with this crazy life that I have, it's one of the best things that's that, that I've take on as an identity. It's balance, it's my middle name, it's what I believe in, it's what I stand for. Um, and then there's other things like great taste, um, really chill, not about the drama, honesty. It doesn't get any better. So, so yeah, the only thing, I mean, the, the one negative, just to be fair, that I would say is I'm indecisive and I hate that. That's the only thing I like, that's my one wish. If I had one wish is to be decisive because when I'm hungry, just to, like, come on now. Like, I, like, let's be for real. Let's pick a thing, let's pick a restaurant, let's keep it going. I can't even do that. So that's, that's my only thing. But I love being a Libra and I'm happy to, to be here. Okay. So I would ask you, who is your favorite artist or who are your musical influences? So you can give me both or one or the other. Okay. Um, musical influences and favorite artists. They're kind of the same. Michael Jackson, Brandy, Jasmine Sullivan, Beyonce, Drake, Usher, Chris Brown, Aaliyah. It, the list goes on and on, on, but I'll just I'll just stop right there. Okay, so you have given me voices and talent and creativity. So okay, that <laughs> makes sense. That makes sense. All right, so tell me what's the best advice you've received since signing, or just in general. The best advice I received, um, it's actually something that, that Justin Bieber told me that I that stuck with me to this day that I think about daily. Uh, the day, the first day that he DM'd me, uh, we exchanged numbers and he called me and he told me, you don't have to chase anything. Don't chase anything in your career or in your life and don't strive for anything. Everything that you need, you have and it's in you. And that's something that has really stuck with me because so much of today's society is just like, and just even the economy and like the state of the world and like the industry that I'm in, music is just like chase, 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 strive, strive, strive. But if you like take a second to realize the power that you have and be confident in that and let that be enough, that's more attractive and more powerful than any chasing or striving you could ever do. Um, and a lot of people want you to think that you have to chase and strive and like go after. That doesn't mean don't work hard, but it just means don't force things and just be confident in the power and the gift that you have. So uh, that's one of my favorite pieces of advice I've ever gotten. I love how articulate you are and just how calm and chill. It really gives off Libra. It's just, <laughs> it really does. Thank okay, you. so tell us, Josh Levi, what's next? What's next for Josh Levi? Whoa, what a crazy question. Um, well, I'm, I'm working on my debut album, which, is, which will be out. Um, is, this is my debut album year. So working on that every day, refining it every day. I feel really good about it. Um, that's really exciting. You can only have your first album one time. So, so really excited about that. Um, I'll be on tour in March, hopping on a couple of cities of my friends flying a bus. Um, I'll be going on my own tour, headline tour again with new music, which I'll be announcing really, really soon. Um, and, and yeah, birthday dance, birthday dance hive, the birthday dance agenda. Um, till further notice, keep doing your little dance, keep streaming, and the music video is coming soon, and yeah. Okay, all right. So, of course, with the progress report, our key word is progress. So tell me, what does the word progress mean to you? To me, progress means growth. It means 
making it, waking up each day and getting through the day, winning the day. That's progress. It doesn't mean that you're successful. It doesn't mean that you got all the accolades and all the awards. It just means that you got one step further, one foot further. That's progress to me. So, well, thank you again for skipping class with us. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. The Progress Report.